The next 7 star terror raid event for Meganium has just been announced in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. In today's video, we're going to go through some of the best builds that you can put together in your game so you can beat easily when the event goes live later this week. <laughs> So off the back of the trio of seven star terror raid events that we had for Blastoise, Venusaur and the Charizard after the announcement on Pokemon Day, we finally have our next seven star terror raid event and it will be featuring Meganium. The event will be going live for the first time this coming week from the 5th of April and running over that weekend until the 7th of April and then it will be returned the following week for its second time out from the 12th of April until the 14th. From that second phase out, it will be accompanied by a Blissey 5-star Terror Raid events that are going to give you more rare candies, XL candies, and Terror Shards, which those raids are renowned for. So a good way to stock up on items and tools for building your team. So that is when the raid is going live. Meganium, one of those Pokemon that might be quite easy on paper when we look at it, but it has got some decent stats to back it up and make it very difficult to break down. You can see here it's got those base 100 defense and special defense stats that make it pretty tankish it might not have the best move pool overall but like we've mentioned it is going to be a pure psychic terror type the only caveat to this is going to be that it doesn't really have too many psychic type attacks it's going to have reflect namely one of them that it does learn from level up and light screen so naturally going to be a very defensively built pokemon Outside of that, it only has one attacking option on the Psychic Spectrum, and that is going to be the Zen Headbutt, and it is a physical type attack. So again, might be an indication with where we see Meganium going when it goes live later this week. So as always, with the 7-star Terror Raid event, it will have that 30 times multiplier to its HP. It'll take it to around 9,030 HP that we're going to have to do to beat it. It's going to have its hidden ability. With that Leaf Guard, Meganium is going to have the ability to avoid any status conditions as long as the sun is in effect on the field of course it will be level 100 and it will have that psychic terror typing as for the move pool that mcginium's got it's probably one of its weaker points with access to a flurry of grass type attacks but not much coverage outside of that it does have leaf storm of course probably one of its stronger grass type attacks that it does have access to we can't ignore the fact that it could have special attacking moves alongside those physical type attacks that I expect to see from it. One of those physical type grass attacks it does get is going to be Petal Blizzard. That's probably one of its more signature type attacks. I could see it running this in this raid. Zen Headbutt, of course, is going to be its only psychic type attacking option. And unless it goes down the route of Terror Blast, I think this is what we're likely to see on the Meganium. Solar Blade is another physical type attacking option that it does have from that grass side of things where it could play into using that sunny day from the supporting option to get that leaf guard activated as well as turning solar blade into a one turn attacking move where it is normally a turn to charge before then it will attack the following turn it does have access to stomp and tantrum that is going to be a ground type attacking move and it will be a physical type attacking move as well that it can play off and then body press as well that can play off its high defensive stat that is going to be able to give it fighting type coverage meaning that some of the dog type pokemon that we might think could be good going into this raid are going to have a little bit of a harder time if that is present so these two here i think it might not have both of them it might do but i think for the most part it's probably going to have one of the two of these supporting options so it might dictate which pokemon will be better than others depending on which move we see it go with its setup options of course are going to be a lot better than its attacking options we've already mentioned the reflect and the light screen when set up they're going to boost its defense by 1.5 for five turns after setting it up it has sunny day as well which again is going to play into that solar blade if we see it there and definitely that leaf guard ability preventing it from being afflicted by any status conditions and it does have a fairy type attack in charm so that is going to be able to lower our attack stat by two stages every time it uses it so something that we have to consider that might be an option on the meganium to really slow down our progress in the raid and then for setup options it does have sword stance that's going to be able to boost its attack by two stages every time it uses it make those big physical type attacks a lot more threatening and also curse as well that could play off boosting its attack by one stage and its defense in lowering its speed the fact that it can boost its defense can really boost the power of body press which relies on that defensive stat not the attacking stat of the pokemon so something to really keep an eye out for and i could see definitely a combination of maybe even swords dance and the curse and then that body press being its coverage option to give it a route to being able to beat dog type pokemon a little bit more effectively with the lack of fairy type moves that it does have but all in all this is the meganium i don't think there's really too much else to expect from it 
it has got a base 80 speed stat so it's not gonna be the fastest of pokemon but something just to keep in mind when you are putting builds together for yourself in game now going into this raid i've put six builds together as always these will be featured down in the description below if you want to take a look at them after the video and it goes without saying that it might be worth saving your resources before putting anything together in your game until the raid goes live we always cover here on the channel best solo build once we've done a testing phase so if you are wanting to put resources into a particular pokemon train one up and things like that it's not a waste because some of these builds might not work depending on what options the meganium has coming later this week so these are the builds that i have put together in my game and what i think could work when the raid goes live but nothing's a guarantee of course but like i say all the details of these builds will be down in the description below we're going to start off with skeledurge the fire and ghost type pokemon we've got the terror typing of ghost on the skeledurge we've got the held item of the shell bell and we are level 100 just make sure that all your pokemon if you're training them for raids goes without saying but make sure they are hyper trained so all the ivs are maxed and their stats are as strong as possible the moveset that we've got in the skeledurge is going to be shadow ball lick hex and torch song and the ability which is the most important thing is going to be that hidden ability unaware that's going to make sure that if the meganium is setting up with those sword stances with those curses throughout the raid then with the unaware ability, you're going to be able to ignore any of those stat boosts on the Meganium side of the field and kind of execute your game plan as effectively as you need to. The basic premise with this moveset is going to be using that lick. You've got a 30% chance to paralyze the Meganium whenever you use it. And then when you combine that with the move Hex, which doubles its base power when the target Pokemon is afflicted by a status condition, i.e. burn, paralysis, sleep or anything like that then that move becomes very, very potent. Of course, you do have Shadow Ball to rely on if the Hex and the Lick aren't possible, which might be the case in this raid. We do see the Meganium going down the route with that Leaf Guard and the Sunny Day combination. Not really going to be able to put a status condition onto it, so you might have to rely on the Shadow Ball. But all in all, with the Unaware ability on the Skeledurge, you're not going to worry about anything that the Meganium is going to be boosting up to do additional damage. That's not going to be a factor in this raid. You're going to be pretty much relying on the torch song to boost your special attack stat make sure that you're hitting as hard as possible and then you utilize either that lick hex combination when it's paralyzed or just the shadow ball once you're terrestrialized to do as much damage as possible ev spread is pretty straightforward we are expecting the meganium to be more of a physical threat so we've went for 252 evs in defense and then 252 evs in special attack with the remaining four put in to HP and a modest nature just to maximize the attack damage when we do terrestrialize. Next up is going to be another fire and ghost type Pokemon. I do feel like Serilege is going to be a decent option again going into this raid. It is going to have the expert belt held item level 100 hyper trained of course with the moveset of Sword Stance, Clear Smog, Shadow Claw and Bitter Blade. We've got the ability Flash Fire here. And then the EV spread of 252 EVs in HP and 252 EVs in attack with the remaining EVs put into defense. The basic idea with the, the Serra Ledge is going to be using that clear smog to remove any stat boosts that we see on the Meganium. Every time you use it, it's going to remove them. They're going to nullify all of those stat boosts on the Meganium side of the field. So if it is going for those sword stances, it is going for those curses, you're going to be able to remove those boosts pretty easily, even through the shield. And then you're going to be setting up your own sword stances, maximizing your attack power, using your bitter blade whenever necessary to recover health. And then the shadow claw once you are terrestrialized into that ghost type to do maximum damage to this meganium. So a very good option, I think. The only thing you're going to have to watch out for with the Serra Ledge is if the meganium has access to that stomp and tantrum. It is going to be a bit of a threatening attack. But I think outside of that, the Serra Ledge is something that a lot of you probably have in your games already. And a decent option, I think, going into this raid. Now, the next one is a bit of an outlier, but I do think Lortex could be a very good option going into this raid. It's got perfect typing going into the meganium raid with that bug and the dark typing it's going to have an immunity to any of those psychic type attacks that come out from the meganium it's also going to resist any of those grass type attacks with its bug typing now for this build we've went for the bug terror typing now, there's nothing wrong to say that you can't go for a dark terror typing on this and go for a dark attacking move over the other options but i think this build probably suits what the Meganium is going to try and do in the raid a little bit better. We've got the Shell Bell as a held item. It is going to give you a line of recovery, level 100, of course. And the moveset we've got is going to be Brick Break, Screech, Sword Stance, and Lunge. Now, Brick Break might seem a little bit strange on here. And if we don't see Light Screen or Protect, 
I don't think you need the Brick Break. Probably change that for something like Leech Life or something like Taunt as well to shut down any setup on the Meganium. We've got the ability Swarm there. It's probably the best option that you've got on the Lortex and the EV spread of 252 in HP. 252 in attack with an adamant nature now the idea of the brick break is if the light screen and the fleck go up then you can use brick break it's not going to be very effective on the meganium but that's not the point it will remove the screens from the field meaning that you're not going to have to deal with those defense boosts that the meganiums kind of just set up screech to lower the defense on the meganiums defense by two stages every time you use it just bear in mind if the shield is up you're not going to be able to use the screech you're going to have to wait till the shield is broken to utilize that move and then you've got sword stance to boost your attack and i think lunge is the best option here because every time you use the lunge on the lortex you're going to have the 100 chance of lowering the attack stat on the meganium so making it less threatening throughout the raid and you're going to have more room to get your sword stances your screeches set up and i think with its base typing Lotex is such a good option here. It might not be renowned as having the best defensive stats, but I think it's going to be able to handle itself pretty well with that lunge against the Meganium. It could be a bit of a sleeper pick going in this weekend. The next build is going to be Skunk Tank and an option that could be also very good against the Meganium, depending on what options it does have. Does it have the Slumber Tantrum or does it have the Body Press, of course? With the Poison type in, it does make the body press neutral against you as long as you're in your base typings. We've went for the held item of the Shell Bell, level 100, of course. And then the moveset is going to be Taunt, Acid Spray, Nasty Plot, and Dark Pulse. Ability Stench here doesn't really make too much difference on the Skunk Tank, but the EV spread that we've got is 252 HP and 252 special attack with a modest nature and the rest of those EVs, the remaining six put into defense. Now, the basic idea with the Skun tank is going to be to get a taunt off turn one. If you can, if the shield's not up very early on in the raid, you're going to be able to taunt the Meganium, prevent it from being able to set up and then go for those acid sprays. Because even if the shield's up, you're going to be able to utilize acid spray and lower that special defense on the Meganium by two stages every time you use it. It's also going to tick down on your terrestrialization clock as well. So you only need to use three of those. Get the Meganium down to minus six. Then you're going to be able to terrestrialize yourself and utilize that Dark Pulse. On top of that, if you've got room, you're going to be able to use Nasty Plot to boost your special attack by two stages. Laying off that lowering of the special defense on the Meganium, boosting your special attack. And then fire off some very powerful Dark Pulses, which are going to be super effective against the Meganium. Well, this could be a very good option going into Meganium. I think not one to ignore, but maybe a solo build that could work. We'll have to see when the raid goes live. Again, if the Meganium does have access to something like that Stomp and Tantrum. It'd make it a little bit more difficult and especially if the body press is there from the Meganium depends how it interacts in the raid but definitely something that I could see working this weekend when the raid goes live next up is going to be Mew and the only reason I'm putting Mew here is because those of you that took part in the seven star terror raid event for Mew 2 earlier this year probably picked up one of the free Mews that was given out in mystery gifts and probably utilized the bug type Mew in those raids and I think for good reason it did a very good job and for those reasons it's going to do just as good a job against the Meganium this weekend it's got a really good move pool we've given the shell belt as the held item like we've mentioned bug terror typing on here at level 100 and we've got the move set of acid spray nasty plot iron defense and bug buzz so that's going to play off the bug terror typing here and an ev spread of 252 hp with 252 special attack and modest nature and the rest put into that defense stat with the ability synchronized the idea is if the meganium is setting up the sword stances or those curses then you've got the iron defense to kind of bolster your defenses and a bit like the skun tank where we are going to go for those acid sprays to lower the special defense on the Meganium by two stages every time you use it and then combine that with the nasty plot to do huge damage once we can terrestrialize with the bug buzz. Now you could go down a dark terror type option with the Mew as well. You don't need to necessarily go down a bug type and then replace the bug buzz with dark pulse. That would be super fine, but I think it might depend on what options we see the Meganium have going into this raid. If it doesn't have that body press, then I think the dark typing is way better of an option than the bug type. But if the body press is present on the Meganium, bug typing is probably better, even though you're going to be taking neutral damage from those psychic type attacks that could come up from the Meganium, you will have a resistance to those body presses with the bug typing. So a decent option, something to consider, especially like I say, if you picked up one of the Mews earlier in the year, 
and have a similar build from the Me Too Terror event that was live later last year. And an honorable mention for King Gambit as well. I think because it's got very good defensive stats, it could be a decent option against the Meganium. The only drawback with the King Gambit is going to be those coverage moves that the Meganium has. It doesn't have many, so you've got to say probably will have Stomp and Tantrum or probably will have the Body Press. Of course, if it doesn't have the Body Press, I think King Gambit's life becomes a lot easier. Level 100, Shell Bell as the Hell item, Dog Terror Typing, of course, on the King Gambit. And then the moveset that we went for is going to be Sword Stance, Iron Defense. I've put Leah here um, to lower the defense by one stage every time you use it. And then Kauto Cleave is going to be the main attacking option. If you don't really want to go down Leah route and we do see Light Screen and Reflect, King Gambit does get access to Brick Break, so you could replace the Leer with that Brick Break and then be able to have an option to remove those screens if and when we do see them set up. The ability Define is quite nice because if we do see them again, even have Charm, it's going to proc that Define ability every time it uses it, kind of neutralizing that attack overall, not going to give us a boost, not going to give us a drop, so it's quite nice to play alongside the Sword Stance that we can utilize to boost our attacking stat. If you do go down a Leer, of course, when that shield is broken, you're going to be able to reduce the defense on the Meganium every time you use it. And Iron Defense just gives us a little bit of staying power throughout the raid. EV spread is going to be 252 EVs in HP and then 252 EVs in attack with the rest in that defense stat. So that is a King Gambit. These are all of the builds, everything that we covered in today's video. They're all down in the description below. But again, I really like the look of the Lortex. I hope this works. And also that Skun Tanked as well. But you might have to go with more solid options like the Skeledurge. I feel like going to be very, very consistent going into this rage with that unaware ability where it's just going to be able to ignore the most part what the Meganium is going to try and do set up against you. And you're going to have that consistent way to set up your special attacking stat with the Torch Song and then utilize either that hex and lick combination or just the shadow ball once you do terrestrialize but there are a few options that we put together of course like i've already mentioned we will be going live later this week when the raid goes live in game but i'll be in london so we will be from a hotel location when the raid goes live later this week but i still will get a solo video out as soon as i can once the raid goes live so let me know down in the comment section below what you think will be the best build to beat this meganium when it goes live later this week and uh, which one of the builds that we featured today do you like the best? I would love to hear from you. If you've enjoyed today's video, do drop a like on the video. It does really help out. And do subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all of our Pokemon Scarlet and Violet content. Thank you for tuning in, friends. Have a great rest of your day. And I will see you all in another one very soon. So until then, take care and bye-bye.